Hey y'all, my name is Ariana and welcome to my YouTube channel. Make sure you guys like this video, leave me a comment down below, share this video with a friend, and also subscribe to my channel if you are new, and also follow me on all of my social media platforms. First things first, I want to give a huge, huge shout out to Arabella Hair. Thank you for sponsoring this video today and sending me this wig. The wig also came with a goodie bag, and the goodie bag had a wig cap, the elastic melting band to melt your lace, a little baby hair brush comb duo thing. I love getting those. It also came with this cute little barrette accessory. I don't know what you call it, but I'm going to have to figure out how to incorporate that into one of my future videos. And lastly, some lashes. I have a very love-hate relationship with bleaching my knots on a lace wig. However, I was looking at the knots on this wig and because most of the knots were black, I decided to go ahead and bleach the knots. Normally, if it's a lighter colored wig, sometimes I will skip bleaching the knots and I'll just make sure that I tint my lace really, really good during the install process. But yeah, so here is the wig. As you guys can see, it is transparent lace. The wig is 22 inches, 180% density, body wave texture, and the name of it is Dark Burgundy with Rose Red Highlights. I'm gonna have it linked down below in the description box, but yeah, that's the specs on the wig. So now onto the actual bleaching the knots process. I first like to start with putting a little bit of got to be free spray on the hairline for two reasons. Reason number one, I need to get all of the hairs going in the same direction, which is away from the lace because I have a habit of accidentally bleaching the hairs where the hairline is at. And that's not cute. That's not the goal of bleaching the knots. The second reason why I like to put the hairspray on the lace or on the hairs is because it kind of prevents the hairs from getting bleached because there is an additional barrier. It doesn't stop them from getting bleached, but it definitely will help. So yeah, how I do the bleach, if it's a frontal, I will do two scoops of bleach. If it's a closure, I will do one scoop of bleach. Also, I don't measure my developer anymore only because I've kind of been repeatedly bleaching knots on my lace at this point and I kind of know the consistency that I like. But as you guys saw, I will slowly pour the developer in a little bit at a time, mix it, see if I like the consistency. If it's still too thick, I will add a little bit more. Once the mixture is ready, then I will apply it on the lace. I like to start at the back of the lace and then work my way up towards the hairline. And I like to just take my time with this I use, I would say medium pressure. I don't use like a whole lot of pressure to where it's like leaking through the lace, but you have to use enough pressure to where the knots are actually covered. Because in the past, I used to think I was doing my thing with bleaching the knots and I would put it on there, not really flip the lace over to see if the knots were actually covered. And then I would be upset when it's time to rinse it after I set my timer and everything. And it's pretty much like it did nothing. So make sure that you guys are looking at the top of the wig or like the front side of the wig as you guys are bleaching your knots. You don't just want to look at the inside of the wig. You got to look at the top of it too to see if the knots are actually being covered. And especially because the bleach mixture is kind of on the thicker side, that's why you have to use a little bit more pressure to actually push it through the lace. If your mixture is too watery, then you're going to accidentally bleach your knots anyway. So I would personally rather my mixture be a little bit thicker versus too watery. Now, as y'all can see, this wig was saggy and it was being weighed down by the bleach. So I just like to take a piece of aluminum foil and I ball it up and put it inside the wig. That way the bleach is able to process and breathe and that way the hair is not crumpled on top of each other. So I know y'all seen me use the 40 volume developer. Yes, I like to use 40 volume developer instead of 30 like I used to back in the day. I used to use 30 because I was afraid because 40 volume developer is very fast lifting and if you're not quick, it can go real south real fast. So anyway, now we are shampooing out the wig. I let the knots bleach for maybe like eh, 15 minutes or so. It really doesn't take me that long to bleach my knots anymore because one, I'm too impatient to wait around all day for it to process. So yeah, I just, I lift it a little bit and once it's light brown, my skin tone, I rinse it out. I don't even care for it to get blonde anymore. 
So yeah, I use neutralizing shampoo on the lace. Scrub that in, scrub a dove. And then on the actual hair, I use Design Essentials Almond. Y'all saw it on the screen. Y'all saw the shampoo that I used. I only use that one because it's moisturizing and it also smells really, really good. And I wanted to make sure that the hair itself was healthy. So I know y'all see that water in the sink. It, the wig is bleeding at this point. I was confused. Um, I thought it was coming straight from the knots, but I noticed the hair didn't really start bleeding until I put the Design Essentials essentials <laughs> can't talk today shampoo on the hair itself and then it started bleeding red so i don't know just the wig is nice but that's just something i wanted to take note of so y'all are aware so for those of y'all who are new to my channel i like to quickly dry my wigs i don't like to let them sit overnight and air dry i i don't like doing all that especially because who got time for that so as y'all can see me assembling this towel, this is my quick dry, I can't talk, quick blow dry method. And as y'all can see, I put the wig in the middle of the towel, fold the towel in half. I put my blow dryer on high heat and I make sure that I tuck the blow dryer in a space that's not directly on the wig because you don't want to burn the wig or set your house on fire. Um, but yeah, you just want to make sure that it's direct heat blowing on the wig. And it could do this for maybe like 20, 30 minutes and you good to go. On to the plucking. Y'all, back in the day, I used to struggle so bad with plucking. It would take me forever. I was one of those people that would always over pluck. And then I went through this phase where because I was so afraid to over pluck, I didn't want to pluck at all. And then my wigs were looking real wiggy. Um, so now I have found a happy medium. I don't really know how to verbally explain what I do with plucking outside of pluck a space, skip a space, pluck a space, skip a space, comb the hairline back, see what it's looking like, and then pluck more in areas that's needed. One thing I will note is you kind of want to have an idea on the style that you're going to wear before you start going crazy with the plucking. Because if you're going to do a middle part, you don't want to pluck too, too much where the middle part is going to be at because it's going to be looking crazy where the part actually starts at. So yeah, just watch what I'm doing. Um, take your time with it. <laughs> it's not a race. Um, make sure that you guys are parting back into the hairline to make sure that you guys can actually get it flat and still do the same thing by plucking the space and skipping the space. That's the best description I have as far as plucking. Outside of that, you want to make sure that you're plucking on a lightly colored surface. So like my canvas blockhead is pretty much white, so I'm really able to see exactly what the hairline is going to look like. Um, yeah that's all i got for plucking i really have no advice outside of that <laughs> so just watch what i'm doing slow the video down if you guys need help rewind it leave comments down below also leave comments down below in general on video ideas that you want me to do questions that you guys have i don't know L let's chat down below i really want to talk to y'all but sometimes y'all don't be leaving me no comments so i'd be sad So this is where, in my opinion, the actual tutorial starts. This is kind of like a prerequisite to the actual blowout part, which is the title of the video, the viral at home salon blowout. Um, I've noticed a lot of the TikTok videos I watched, it was some white girls, but it was also like Hispanic girls, Indian girls, pretty much just girls from everywhere who rock the blowout look. And I noticed that most of them have layers. So because this wig didn't already come with layers, sorry, it's very overexposed right here. It's, it's going to get fixed as you guys see. Um, but yeah, back to the layers. Most of the girls have very short layers on the top and then their hair underneath is longer. So I figured, hey, why not? Let me go ahead and add layers while the wig is on the canvas head. That way it'll be a little bit easier for me to get the look that I'm going for. So I'm just taking an affordable razor. It's like less than $5 at the hair store. And I'm just starting from the top, cutting short layers, and just gradually working my way down the hair. It's easier to watch what I'm doing versus listening to me explaining it. But yeah, you can go through and look to see where you need to add more layers at. Or yeah, that y'all see what I'm doing. Ain't no point in me over explaining it. 
this was really just the rough draft haircut once i installed the wig i ended up doing another haircut because i decided to go in a different direction with this style because at first i wanted to have a longer look and then once i put it on my head i was like nah baby we got to go a little bit shorter give her some more body some more movement so yeah y'all are pretty much just gonna see me here adding layers i also clipped the top half of the hair out of the way and added some more layers throughout the middle of the wig as well because you don't want the wig to be like weighed down or heavy because you're not going to have any movement like that if you want to have a lot of movement and a lot of body you got to add layers and in my opinion the razor is the easiest way to get layers if you're not a professional just go to the store get you a razor and do exactly what i'm doing it's really not hard now the moment you all have been waiting for the at home salon blowout so if you guys have never done a blowout if you want your curls to last at least a week you need to set your hair you can use like a curling iron if you want curls however most people's curls drop after a day or two with a heat tool so i prefer to do blowouts and roller sets because you they literally last like an entire week plus depending on how you maintain your hair so this is just how I wanted to do it. I have a TikTok video that I referenced and I really liked how that girl did her layers and the way that she rolled her hair because her results were amazing. So first row is maybe from like, maybe the middle of your ears across. You want to section that part of your hair out, wet it just a little bit. The wig was, I would say the wig was maybe like 90% dry before I added the water. And then I just lightly misted the section that I was on. You don't want to drench the section that you're on because it's gonna take like two days for your wig to dry if you do that. Also, if you're doing this on your real hair, you're gonna be sitting there rolling and rolling for hours. It might hurt your wrist, it's, it's not fun. So just don't drench your hair, it's really not necessary. So yeah, I got the blow dryer. I have it on a high heat setting and high power or airflow. And y'all, y'all see me struggling, like the wig tripod was moving all around, the hair was getting tangled. Yo girl was struggling with this, trying to do it like this. Normally, if I were to do a brush blowout or round brush blowout, I would do it on an actual client because I'm able to get a little bit more tension. But because I was doing this on a wig head, y'all look at the screen. <laughs> I am struggling. <laughs> My life is in shambles right now. So yes, I was trying to keep at it, still struggling, trying to see if it was gonna work to see if I was gonna be able to stick with it. The T-pins are coming out of the wig at this point. It was a hot mess. And I was like, no, we were doing so good with this video. I really don't wanna trash it. We gotta figure this out. So, okay, it, it got a little curl on the end as y'all can see, but I seen that and I was like, uh-uh, this ain't gonna work. That curl was too weak for me. So let's start over. So I'm remisting the hair because the blow dryer dried the hair out and I got my rollers. I'm going to link these down below as well. I think it's Conair Velcro rollers, something like that. I'm going to have the link down below. I got mine at Walmart. It was 10, 10 ish dollars. It's affordable. So yeah, the bottom row I am rolling up as you guys can see. And the reason why I'm doing that is because the girl on TikTok explained that if you roll it up, you get a better curl. And if you roll it down and over direct the hair, you get more volume, if that makes sense. So yeah, the bottom row, I am rolling up, as you guys can see. On the first row, I used three rollers. Also, I didn't use any clips. Main reason why is because I literally didn't have any. I looked all over the house, couldn't find them. But luckily, because they are Velcro rollers, they stayed in place on the wig. If you guys are doing this on your real hair, I still would recommend using clips because most times girls will set their hair and then go to sleep. And you would hate for your rollers to get messed up in the middle of the night because it can mess up your results. So now we're on to the next section. This one is right around, it's like a little bit below your temple area, between your temple and your top of your ears. Just part it throughout there. Again, this row is the same as the first one. We're going to curl it up. Still make sure that you are spritzing each section lightly with water. Take your time with rolling. 
it is a little bit harder to do a roller set on hair that's already layered because as you guys can see some of the hairs will fall out because they're too short but as you're rolling the roller up you can just gradually grab the shorter hairs now we are on the third layer so this one is more so around your actual temple i don't know y'all see what i'm doing this little section this section is where we're going to start focusing on adding volume and to do that instead of rolling up this time we're going to brush the hair up and kind of over direct it a little bit and then we're going to roll the hair down again reason why we're doing this is because it's going to give you the lift at the root that a lot of the girlies like with the salon blowout look and you also kind of sort of get a tighter curl because it's more on base which means that the roller is closer to your scalp if you notice on the previous layers that i did the rollers are not directly on the scalp at all so yeah it is it gives two different looks if it's hard to understand it you kind of just have to play around with each look to see exactly what i'm talking about so yeah on this row i think i got about four rollers in I like using the pink size just because it gives like that body wave bombshell look it's fire so now we're on the top section this section is a little bit different so i am parting out it's going to be three rows horizontally across the top of the head the first row again over direct the hair but as you guys can see i'm using the green rollers that come in the same set with the pink um now we are on to the second row in this row i ended up using two rollers and I'm curling away from the face. So the first green roller and the second green roller rows are away from the face. And then the last green row or top row is going to go towards your face. Y'all see what I'm doing. I really hope I'm not over explaining this or confusing y'all. But yes, on the last row, over direct the hair away from you or away from the wig's face. Roll the hair down and that's pretty much it it's pretty simple it's easier to see what i'm doing versus listening to what i'm explaining but yeah on the last row i ended up using two green rollers so it was one green roller on the first row two green rollers on the second and then two green rollers on the third row and this is what my roller set looks like it doesn't have to be perfect again it's a wig Off camera, I let the wig dry under my hooded dryer for maybe two hours on high heat and then one hour on low heat. Completely wasn't necessary for it to be under there that long, but I just wanted to make sure that it was dry. And then I went to bed because I was sleepy and I just let the rollers set overnight. But if you guys don't want to wait that long, you can probably leave the rollers in for maybe two to three hours and then you should be fine and good to go with that as well. So now we're onto the wig install, as y'all can see. Right now, I'm just brushing my flyaways and baby hairs back. That way, they don't get glued down during the install. This part's pretty self-explanatory. Y'all have seen a million wig installs. This part's kind of boring. Um, your girl was attempting to put a wig cap on because I don't like sewing my braids down. Like Whenever I'm off camera, I take the wigs off, I rock my braids and a hat, and I go about my life as such. <laughs> So yeah, I'm using the foundation shade that is close enough to my skin tone. You don't wanna use your concealer shade, which is a little bit lighter than you. You actually want to use your foundation shade, one that matches you exactly. Um, in my opinion, it just looks better, but hey, do your thing, sis. It's, it's your world, I'm just living in it. This is the wig, as y'all can see. The curls are curling. It's She's cute, right? Y'all can see the excitement on my face. <laughs> I was so excited with this. I was just thankful that it dried. But y'all, these Velcro rollers, we be in there boxing. I be fighting, trying to get these rollers out of the hair. So yeah, that's what it looks like all out. Right here, I am cutting out the combs. I don't really like combs in my wigs, to be honest. It normally will attach onto my hair and break my hair off. I don't like that. Now I'm just tinting my lace. This is very self-explanatory. This video is not a very detailed wig install. If you guys want to see that, I can put a card up there so you guys can see my previous video on the detailed wig install. This was more so focusing on the blowout. So this, at this point, this is really just visuals. I'm just up here putting my wig on, doing me, looking cute, as y'all can see. 
But yeah, do y'all see that wig cap underneath the lace? I was struggling trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, if you guys didn't know, I am a glueless girl. I'm a glueless wig wearer. I like glue sometimes, but it really irritates my skin. So these days I just like to rock my wig for the day and then I'll take it off at night. Um, yeah, so it wasn't working with the wig cap as you guys saw. So I ended up taking it off and to me it looked a lot better. So we just went with that. Cutting my ear tabs out. This part is very self-explanatory. This was my first time trying the Even Lace Wonder Spray. I'm gonna have that link down below as well. Um, I ain't gonna lie, I really, really like it. Like I wore the wig all day today. I don't have any skin irritation. The wig came up easily with water. Um, I didn't lose any hair. Again, my skin's not irritated. That's like the big thing. One thing I will say about this spray though, I don't like spraying it on top of my lace. I prefer to spray it on my skin, on my forehead first and then put the lace over it. I don't know, like it, when it gets in the hair, it's just, y'all gonna see. Cause y'all saw the little part where I put the spray at. It's, I don't know, I'm still working with it. I have no idea. One thing I will say about the lace spray though, is that if you don't immediately have your elastic band handy, it's probably going to come up a little bit because it's not dry all the way yet. So there's not really anything holding the wig in place. So if you guys work on clients, tell your clients to hold the lace down while you're putting the band on. And if you're doing it on yourself, as you guys saw what I was doing, I literally had my thumb on one side and my middle finger on the other side of my face trying to make sure the lace wasn't coming up until I could find my band. Right here, I was switching back and forth between medium heat and cool, not cool heat, the cool setting on the blow dryer, <laughs> just to make sure that it was dry all the way. This right here is what I was talking about as far as the lace spray kind of not being your friend if you spray on top of the lace. Like it makes the hair stick down too much. If you guys have tried other hairsprays, I would probably, I can't even compare it to the yellow got to be free spray because the even spray is a lot stronger than the got to be. So it just, it makes the hair crunchy and I don't like that because honestly with wigs, once you have the product on it, Sometimes it's hard to get the product off without removing the wig completely. And if you are a beginner, it's you're going to get frustrated. I'm just going to be straight up with you guys because I was there. I was frustrated for years trying to figure out how to lay my wig down like the girls on the internet. Still struggling. This part right here is the exception though. Like you can spray the even right on the lace after you have already cut it just to like correct any places that you missed. But don't spray your entire hairline with the even because... I'm telling you, you're going to be upset with yourself. And I'm going to be like, mm-hmm, yes, sis, I told you. Don't do it. I do not recommend it at all. Like, it's the hardest thing ever to clean your lace and to clean your hair after you got the spray on it. Y'all, this right here is the best feeling ever. After you have melted your wig and you can finally take that elastic band off of your ears, especially if you have a lot of piercings and air pods in your ears like me. Ooh. Mm. Next, I'm just taking some alcohol and cleaning up mostly my face. I really wasn't touching the hair at all. I was really just trying to get the excess hairspray off of my face because it was mixing with the makeup and we don't like that. Right here, y'all see me struggling to try to comb out the even. It's really, really strong. Like the red can is the strong adhesive. <laughs> I pulled up my lace. I was a little bit upset. I was trying to perfect my plucking a little bit so I had to go back and fix that but it wasn't nothing major y'all we about to transform this wig right here I am so excited to show you guys this oh before I forget one thing about this wig I don't know what's going on with it but it was very difficult for me to keep it detangled it's I don't know if it's the quality of the hair I, I don't know what to say about it to be real with you like it's not impossible to work with it didn't shed too too much it was just annoying to constantly have to detangle like I don't know if it was because of everything that I did to the wig because I didn't really go in with the detangling after I washed it and blow dried the hair as well as when I did the roller set I didn't go in with like a really good detangle so this is really the first time I'm detangling the hair so I don't I don't know, it could have been a combination between what I was doing as well as using Velcro rollers, but it could also be the hair. 
I don't want you guys to think the hair is bad because it's not like this is actually a really really good wig and I love the company and they're very sweet to work with I just don't know what was going on with the fact that I had to keep detangling the hair also with y'all see me trying to put layers in the hair I was having difficulties with cutting the layers not because of the hair but because my razor is also dull so I don't want that to be like a negative reflection on the wig because it wasn't hard to cut the wig at all it's just I know my razor is old so there's that but anyway mini tutorial on how I cut my layers again I like to start short at the top and then I just gradually work my way down with layers it's one of those things again you just kind of have to watch what I'm doing and you have to practice and get your reps up to get in there and see where you need to cut. So y'all seen how excited I was because that right there, baby, baby, the layers are layering. So basically what I do again, short layers on the top and I just gradually work my way down. If I see a place on the hair that's not moving enough for me, that means that there's still too much hair in that area and I need to go in with my razor a little bit more and just gradually work my way down the hair. Again, brushing it out to see what it's giving and she's giving body yadi. Mm. I wanted to do a middle part. This, this hairstyle is really just all about the layers. It was very simple, very quick. Um, Right here, I'm just kind of hot combing the roots. Ooh. Oh, flashbacks burnt my ear. It, it was not a fun time. Um, also another thing I'm going to note this is the hair is good but you don't want to put your hot comb on 500 degrees like I normally do because I ended up burning the hair just a little bit to the point where I almost messed up the entire video I'm glad I didn't but if you're gonna buy this wig because she's fire um I would say don't go over 350 maybe with the hot comb because it's really not necessary I'm just extra and I need my stuff to be flat super flat Right here, I'm just doing my baby hairs, swooping them to the side to see what they look like before I cut them. If it's too thick, again, go in and pluck in. Y'all see what I'm doing. Like, it's wigs is just one of those things that you're going to have to literally sit in front of the mirror and practice and watch as much content as you possibly can so you can get good at your own installs. Especially if you're one of the girlies that's tired of paying one to $200 for an install. I feel you. I also do hair though, so I get the people that don't like doing their hair. So y'all are more than welcome to book me if you want to. But yeah, I get it. So I'm just here to meet y'all's needs and to help y'all wherever y'all need help at. I got my little curling iron at Sally's. The baby hairs that are on the sides, I like to curl them down or like away from my face. Taking my little razor where I see fit to cut. It's very self-explanatory. Y'all see what I'm doing. I do like this mousse a lot for baby hairs because it has a slight hold to it. So if you're more so a beginner, get this mousse because it's it's kind of sticky. Like I like it. It kind of also helps your lace lay down a little bit more because of the hold factor that it has. I don't know what ingredient it is, but it's different than any mousse I've ever used because I did an install on one of my clients with just the mousse and the lace was literally stuck to her head. Like it was almost like it was glue. Like I loved it. I'm getting to the point within my hair journey that I really just want to help you guys as much as I can because I hear you guys out there on the internet, not just y'all, my subscribers, but just girls who get their hair done at a salon. Like times are hard for a lot of people and I get the fact that a lot of people want their hair done, but some people genuinely cannot afford it. So I hear y'all, I feel you. So I just want to be able to meet y'all needs. I love being a hairstylist, but I also understand those that don't have the budget to consistently stay in the chair and getting your hair done. So for y'all who are willing to learn how to do your own hair, I want to also meet y'all's needs and teach y'all how to do it yourself so you can save yourself some coins. And if you genuinely love doing hair like me, I would love to go on this journey with y'all because I'm still learning same as y'all. Then we go back to the hair being tangled while we in the middle of my my speech <laughs> but yeah i'm just combing it out um the wide tooth comb actually worked the best as far as keeping the hair from tangling this is pretty much the finished results but yeah like we love the wig 10 out of 10 but yeah i really really hope this video was helpful i hope i was able to teach you guys how i like to do my blowouts i'm not really a round brush queen with wigs because the wig stand just moves too much so this is my alternate version which i absolutely love the results it is so pretty 
So thanks again for watching. Please make sure you guys give this video a big, big thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Also share this video with a friend and subscribe to my channel if you are new. And lastly, follow me on all of my socials. Thanks again for watching. I will see you guys in my next video.